look at the igniters and flame sensors on our uh, furnace troubleshooting. Uh, normally if you have a problem with the uh, igniter or the flame sensor you'll notice that the furnace doesn't do anything it basically sits there and if you look in the sight glass on most uh, of the newer gas furnaces you'll have a flashing light in there and basically what that'll tell you is that the furnace itself is in what's called a lockout mode that just means that it's not uh, working properly and uh, to uh, diagnose problems with the igniters you begin by uh, shutting off the power to the unit then you want to remove the burner compartment access door. And in this case, uh, this furnace has what's called a hot surface igniter. Uh, basically, there's two different types of igniters. There's a called a spark igniter and uh, what's commonly called hot surface igniter. A spark igniter is really just a metal electrode. Uh, ignition voltage is applied to it and a spark is created much like a spark plug on a car or truck uh, that spark uh, ignites a pilot or in some cases the main gas supply and uh, it causes it to burn uh, the hot surface igniter such as we have in this case uh, basically is a piece of uh, ceramic and uh, a voltage is supplied to it and it heats up into a gets red hot when it gets uh, hot enough then the gas is turned on and just the heat from the igniter itself is uh, enough to ignite the gas uh, if you believe you have a problem with it uh, it's uh, usually pretty simple to diagnose in this case uh, our igniter is right here and our flame sensor is right there in some cases with a direct spark ignition or something like that you will have uh, the uh, spark igniter and the flame sensor will be in one one piece. The best way to uh, check if you suspect that your uh, hot surface igniter is bad is to take a simple resistance reading. Uh, most of them have a plug connection like we do in this case. Simple matter of disconnecting the plug and then take your meter put one lead on each of the uh, the terminals and you'll get a resistance reading. In this case we've got about 75 ohms which is about what I would expect. Uh, the normal method of failure for a hot surface igniter is that uh, it will crack, the ceramic itself will crack and whenever it does that then, uh, then uh, you will have a resistance reading of open or infinity. If you do need to replace it, it's usually a pretty simple matter of removing a couple mounting screws. And typically the assembly will pop out just like it did there. Uh, this is actually what the thing looks like. And normally if it's bad you'll see a little crack in the ceramic there. Uh, when you're selecting a new one, most of them have on them a model number on a sticker. If you match the model number it's a simple matter of uh, removing this mounting screw. Slide the new one back in, tighten it up, put it back in hook the connections up. Uh, one thing you want to be sure that uh, you don't do is you don't want to touch the ceramic the uh, igniter. Uh, if you do that then it will cause it to fail sooner. After you have the, the new and reinstalled it's a simple matter of plugging it back in and uh, their plug is usually polarized so it can only go connected one way. After you do, simple matter of turn the power back on to the furnace, run it through a heating cycle. If uh, you have a separate flame sensor and you think that you're having a problem with it, uh, uh, there's very few problems that actually occur with the sensor itself. And uh, if 
do have a problem, it's simple removing. Usually it's just a matter of removing a mounting screw. And that's all there is to a flame sensor usually. It's just a metal rod surrounded by a ceramic connector with a wire attached to it. Uh, basically it works on the flame rectification principle. Basically the gas flame conducts electricity and it goes uh, through the uh, sensor to the control board and tells it, uh, tells it that it's working. Uh, many and many many of these get replaced and there's very rare that it is the cause of a problem. Uh, the most common problem is that over time it'll build up a sort of a sooty type dirty coating on the uh, on the uh, metal part of the sensor uh, and it's simple matter if you can clean that off with some uh, really fine sandpaper or uh, it's better to clean it with uh, just a, a damp rag just to wipe it off and uh, like I said it's very rare that that will the sensor itself will be bad but if it is it's simple matter to replace you'll have to uh, get the exact one for your furnace uh, and it's simple matter of sticking her back in mounting the screw back